Big doings in the Hub City for the 1990 home season football opener. Big spirit as Lubbock got ready to fill Jones Stadium. Raider fans were so fired up that even Old Will was seeing red. And big stars as the Gatlin boys returned to their West Texas roots. Hi, this is Rudy Gatlin, Texas Tech Red Raider, class of 1974. Brother Steve right here, class of 73. 73, That's 1973. Right. Welcome to video ticket. Spike video. The video. Okay. And and I'm Larry Gatlin from, from the University of Cougar Houston, High. and the name of it is Video Season Ticket. Video and welcome. Video Season Ticket. Yes. See, welcome. these tech boys couldn't even get it right. Cougar High. Going to shoot down Cougar High tonight. We'll see. It's Spike's show. Hi everybody, welcome to the video season ticket. Well, Texas Tech has certainly had a tough time the last couple of weeks, but don't get off that bandwagon just yet. When it gets rolling, you may be left behind. I believe these players and this coaching staff are gonna put it all together. For right now, let's go back to Jones Stadium. Ray Gaskin has the Houston Cougars and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. sang the national anthem and took part in the halftime activities Thursday night at Jones Stadium. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ray Gaskin with you for highlights of the Red Raiders home opener against the Houston Cougars, an unusual Thursday night game to accommodate a national ESPN television audience. Houston on the attack first to start the game. Chuck Weatherspoon sets the tone for the Houston offense, gaining 17 yards. Then quarterback David Klingler goes to work with the run and shoot, and they were running and shooting quickly. It is Klingler going deep to Verlin Brown. It's a 53-yard touchdown, and Houston is up 7-0. Quarterback Jamie Gill dropping back to pass, throws over the middle to Anthony Manyweather. It's a good gain of 25 yards. Now a bit later, Houston on the attack again. Klingler is back to throw. Fred Petty comes up with a big sack. It's a loss of six yards. Let's go back to the Red Raiders on the attack again. Gill optioning, and it turns into a gain of 13 yards. A couple of plays later, Jamie Gill back to pass. He throws complete to Lewis Sheffield for a gain of 16 yards up the far sideline. Now, two plays later, second down nine at the Tech 46. Gill back to pass, throws complete to Sheffield again. It's a gain of 17 yards. The Red Raiders are moving. A few plays later, though, it's fourth and two at the Houston 29. Lynn tries the middle, and the ball goes over on downs. First and 10 on Texas Tech's next position. Gill to Lynn for a gain of 12 yards. Gill back to pass on this place, trapped and sacked by the Cougars for a loss of eight yards. Gill, by the way, injured and out of the game momentarily. A bit later, Elliott's field goal try is good, and the Red Raiders are on the board with 2.10 left in the first quarter. Now it's Chuck Weatherspoon trying the right side, breaks two, three tackles, and watch Chuck Weatherspoon run with the football. He had an outstanding night for the Houston team. A couple of plays later, first and 10 at the 40. Klingler over the middle to Smith. It's a 40-yard touchdown play for Houston, an 80-yard drive and only five plays. Now we go to second quarter action as Anthony Lynn takes the handoff from Gill. Gill back in the ballgame after being injured and out for a few minutes. Nice gain of 11 yards. Gill back to pass looking for Floyd Hill down the sidelines. He's got it for a gain of 29 yards. The drive continues and Lynn takes the pitch and hurdles into the end zone for the touchdown. It's Houston 14, Tech 11. And on the two-point conversion, you see the result as the Red Raiders are in. Now... Houston on the attack again. Klingler rolls right, flushed out of the pocket, throws to Grant on a busted play. It's a gain of 34 yards. Seven plays later, Klingler to the air again. He looks for Alexander. He scoots into the end zone for the touchdown. Houston is ahead, 21 to 11. Tech's next possession. Gill is back to throw. He finds Rodney Blackshear for a nice gain, but it's wiped out by a penalty. 
few plays later Mike DeLagerheim in the punt and watch this one as he boots it down into Houston territory and the Red Raiders get a nice roll the ball finally coming to rest at the 30 yard line still later in the second quarter it's Houston with the ball again there goes the spoon again Chuck Weatherspoon for 18 yards six plays later and it's spoon again in for the touchdown Houston 28 Texas Tech 11. Now that's it for the first half with the Cougars leading. Let's pause to catch some of the going band from Raiderland Entertainment featuring the Gatlin Brothers Band and the profile of former Raider great Jesse Pruitt. city people, uh, we had a lot of Dallas people, a lot of Houston sure. people, and then we had all the small town people, and it was a blend of, uh, of uh, I guess, of all the people of Texas, and it was, uh, the fr I think it was an education just meeting the people. I, I don't know, I was in a fraternity, and that helped me also get to know the, I, I came from a f fairly poor family, and we met a lot of rich kids. But they were just like we, really. Sure. When you get to Tech, everybody's the same. And uh, it was uh, uh, I, the best time of my life, by far. I think you're so far away. If you're out there, you're there. You're there. There's no other place to go. I get set to the strip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when you get out of Tech, Bring us up to date how you got uh, your now with Vantage. Bring us up to date how you got Well, it's not Vantage at moment, it's Bradford. Okay. But we, some of us bought out a portion of, of the of Vantage mm -hmm. about two years ago. So I actually have ownership in Bradford. Uh, I came, as soon as I got, I got out of school, I had a chemistry degree. I went to work for a company called Sergeant Wells Scientific Company. And my territory was West Texas, so I co-called all of West Texas and sold a lot of chemical plants. Then they moved me into Dallas and I became uh, the division manager here in, for Sergeant Wells. Then they wanted to move me to Chicago. <laughs> and I told that guy, when it, the president of the company came down here to get me to go to, to, uh, to Chicago, I told him how far north I was going to Denton County. <laughs> I wouldn't go any further, more, further north than that. So uh, I... Uh, had a friend that worked here at the time for Vantage mm -hmm. and asked me if I wanted to come to, in the real estate business. And I thought, real estate, that's kind of flim flam business. <laughs> and uh, it was, you, you I, fit right I, in. fit right in. <laughs> but it ended up being uh, the best part of it. The business is a dynamic part time to be in Dallas, Texas. Right. Dallas actually took off as a small town into an international city. 
when you talk to young people, you have a chance to interact with young people? Do you pump tech? Do you talk uh, to them? When I, I speak a lot all over the country, and there's uh, and a lot in Texas too, mm -hmm. and different things. And there's when I get through, they know one that I went to tech, two of them from Blue Rose, Texas. Uh, that's the thing that comes out every time I talk. So uh, no, I think Texas Tech was the greatest thing in my life, and not only mine, but my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. They all followed behind me, and it's been an important part of their lives. So it, it actually changed us all. And it's, uh, I think, uh, Texas Tech is a unique university. The blend that's there and where it's located, there is no other place like it in the world. Do you keep up with the old coaches? Do you keep up I with sure do. Coach King? Fact, Coach King, uh, being on the, he's still on the Cotton Bowl Association. Mm -hmm. So every year when we get together for the game, I see Coach King quite a bit. And, uh, I really enjoy that. I enjoy Coach King and his wife, and, and, and it's, it's a fun time I get with him. And just last year, I was out at, te out at uh, Tech and got to see Coach Conley. We talked for about oh, two hours, and it just made me think about going back all the way when he recruited me. As a matter of fact, we talked about that. And uh, it, it's, they're really great men. And I guess uh, my father was. Was not, we had problems, and, uh, and I kind of adopted those guys as my father mm -hmm. while I was out there. Do you think they know until you get to this age just how much you meant to their, they meant to your life? I, I guess they don't until you get older. It's like uh, my father and I didn't get along uh, until later, and I think people change just like everything else. And, and I think uh, now they do know that, but they go through a lot of young men. Mm -hmm. And I, and I do feel like to those coaches, and maybe it's just the, not, uh, hopefully it's the same today, but I think they all had an important part. They feel like they had an important part in everybody's life. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, I like telling them that I appreciate them because they were an important part of me being what I am today. Hope you enjoyed our halftime feature. Let's get back to the action now. Houston leading 28 to 11 as we go to the third quarter. Gill back to pass, throws complete over the middle to Lloyd Hill. It's a gain of 27. A few plays later, though, Gill is trapped in the backfield. Fumbles the ball is recovered, though, by Brad Elam, but it's a loss of 12. A couple of plays later on fourth and 22 from the U of H 29-yard line. Elliott comes in to try the 46-yard field goal, but Lynn's boot is just short. And so it's still 28 to 11. The Cougars go on the attack now from the 20-yard line. Chuck Weatherspoon again up the middle, breaks a tackle, and he's finally brought down by Dubisky after a gain of 17 yards. Second and 10 from the 44-yard line. Let's watch from ground level as Klingler shovels it off to Weatherspoon. What versatility they've got in this run and shoot offense. He's brought down in the secondary by Walker after a gain of 30. Finally, this drive culminated with Anderson's 26-yard field goal. It's good, and the Cougars lead 31 to 11. Now we move to further action in the third quarter. Klingler on a short drop completes the pass to Marcus Grant out of bounds. Three plays later, Klingler will scramble as you watch from ground level again. He finds Cooper who breaks free from a tech defender and scampers in on a 31-yard touchdown play. And Houston is now up 38 to 11. We're still in the third quarter of Texas Tech's next possession, second down seven. Gill looking over the middle on a quick hitter to Rodney Blackshear. It's an excellent gain of 34 yards. Third quarter draws to a close. Houston leading 38 to 11. Early fourth quarter now. The Red Raiders' Elliott tries a 52-yard field goal, and it's good. And the score is now Houston 38, Tech 14. U of H goes to work again. Klingler sacked by Matt Wingo, one of the few sacks the Raiders had on the night. Next play, though, Klingler completes the pass to Good for a gain of 11 yards. Then on fourth down and five, Anderson comes in to try a 40-yard field goal, and his kick is good. Both kickers having a busy night. It's 41 to 14. Red Raiders have the ball. Gill completes the pass to Blackshear for a gain of 14 yards. First and 10. Now Donald Marshall from the U of H 32. Watch him break free up the far sideline. It's a gain of 15 yards, and there's a penalty against U of H. Moves the Red Raiders closer. Lynn on second and goal from the seven. Takes it around the left side on a seven-yard touchdown run. The score now 41 to 21. Late in the fourth quarter, following another Cougar field goal, Red Raiders have the ball. Gill to Marshall, who breaks tackles and rambles 17 yards. 
Still later, it's a big fourth down and 10 from the Tech 45. Gill throws complete to Norton. Over the middle, it's a gain of 16 to Chris. Still later, third and 19. Gill going deep for Ross, but watch this. Face guarding by the U of H defender. Penalty, of course, is called, and Tech is still alive. First and 10 at the Cougar 34. It's Hill making the catch. And then first and 10 from the U of H 22-yard line over the middle again to Hooper. A nice gain of 16 yards. And the drive continues on a fourth down and six. Gill off balance with a lot of pressure. Throws complete to Blackshare for the touchdown. He juggles the ball but hangs on. And then Tech goes for two. And Lynn will dive over the right side. And it's Houston 44, Texas Tech 29. A good rally by the Red Raiders late in the fourth quarter. Now, after Houston scores another touchdown, Anderson kicks off. Blackshear takes the ball at the five and takes it up the right sideline. And it's an outstanding 47-yard return for Blackshear. The Red Raiders refusing to give up. Their final possession of the night, freshman redshirt quarterback Robert Hall is in the game. He throws complete for a gain of 20. And then on the next play to Blackshear down the middle, the Red Raiders are trying to get on the board one more time before the game ends. One second left. And can they do it? Hall scrambles out to the left. He throws for Naughton at the goal line. Great catch by Naughton for the TD on the final play of the game as Houston wins 51 to 35. But a good comeback in the fourth quarter by the Red Raiders, who now prepare for next week's trip to Albuquerque to play the New Mexico Lobos. I'm Hagen's the offensive line coach, and that's the old tough job in college football today. That's down the trenches where you just, I mean, you rear back and get after it hour after hour, day after day. And Ted's probably as good as there is in the business. I don't know that I've ever seen a guy that could coach a line on an equal with Ted Umbehagen, I tell you. I recruit the Houston area, and uh, of course I recruit Houston, and then I work south of uh, 59 all the way to Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't make many trips to Mexico, though. Yeah. But no, I, I work, uh, work South Texas. Uh, when I go into a home, uh, there's a couple of things that I think are very, very important. And I think the parents and I think the, the student athlete alike, they need to understand that if I'm going to recruit a player to Texas Tech, I'm going to recruit them here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to be a success. That's academically, athletically, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, uh, you know, that's my main goal as a coach uh, is to see people go out and, and, and be successful. Uh, to, to sell Texas Tech, uh, gosh, I think Texas Tech sells itself. Uh, the, you, you can say anything you want to say, but I think what you say is an understatement. Uh, and, until you come out and look, until you come out and see, uh, you got the neatest bunch of young people you ever want to be around. You got a community that wants the university, they want the students. It's not like some situations where they want the money and the jobs, mm -hmm. but they don't want the students because occasionally they'll bring a problem. And uh, Lubbock's not like that. Uh, the people of Lubbock are very, very friendly people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just a great situation, I think, for a university. And, and uh, it's a great place. It's a, it's a little bit laid back. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't know. I think it's a deal where you've got to come look and see. It, it's hard to say. Uh, and describe all the good things because they're just they're too numerous. Mm -hmm. Final question for you. I'm feeling a lot of excitement around this university right now. That must be neat for you to represent this university. All right. Again, uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, I like Texas Tech, and uh, I think it is an exciting place. Uh, I think it's exciting because, again, you've got young people that uh, you see a lot of young people doing a lot of positive things, mm -hmm. and, and that's exciting for, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. This year is the second year of a three-year phase, three-step process to raise the admission standards. Now, there were always standards, but they were somewhat of a stigma because it is true that if you were breathing but hadn't done very well in high school and hadn't done very well on the standardized test, you were admitted on probation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a good term for anybody to be admitted on probation. And in recent years, what the university had discovered is about 95% of the people admitted on probation 
were in fact not able to do collegiate level work. So at the time when we ought to have been acquainting students with successes, confidence building, and moving ahead in their life goals, we were right off the bat giving them a failure experience because those predictor variables are pretty good in predicting ability to do collegiate work. So we have said we're gonna match the entrance requirements more in line with what the academic requirements are. So we have changed through three-step process. Fall of 91 will be the conclusion of that. An admission program that will be, will put the admission standards for this university the same as the other major state universities in, the, in this state so that it'll take the same requirements to get into any of the major state universities. Over the years, there have been many fields of study that have drawn great deals of attention here at Texas Tech University. But recently, at the Lubbock Lake Landmark, there were discoveries made that not only drew regional but worldwide attention. This program actually started in 1936, but in the last 18 years, interest has really come to the fore. That according to Dr. Eileen Johnson, anthropology curator of the Museum of Texas Tech University. First off, the Lubbock Lake site was discovered back in 1936, and the the city owns the land and during a WPA dredging to, in an attempt to, to rejuvenate springs in the area, um, bones of extinct animals and what we now know as Paleo-Indian or early man points were brought to the surface. These were taken to the museum to Dr. Curry Holden who recognized their importance and from that the site was discovered so that the museum has been, the museum at Texas Tech University has been involved with the research, protection, and preservation of the landmark uh, ever since its discovery well over 50 years. The first excavations that were conducted here were conducted through the museum uh, using WPA funds as well. The current phase of research uh, began 18 years ago and I have been involved with that work. I came here to begin that uh, phase of research and we have been uh, working throughout the uh, entire uh, site as we now know it. We now know it as the Lubbock Lake Landmark and it is well over 300 acres in extent. And in the 18 years that we've been working, we've just barely scratched the surface. It has a, a virtually complete geologic, cultural, and natural history records that span the last 12,000 years. We can study in this one location all of the different changes and developments that have happened uh, with man, with the environment, with the climate for this 12,000 years. And that is exceedingly rare in the record around the world. So Six Flags or Astro World or Sea World have nothing on the Hub City as a tourist attraction. What with 12,000 years of continuous habitation? Just think about it, if Spike Dykes had been the football coach 12,000 years ago, he could have given a new meaning to the phrase, we've got to go out and recruit us some Cro-Magnon men or Neanderthals for that offensive or defensive line. Anytime you play top 20 teams and good football teams, uh, it's hard to win them all. They really is. I wish we were, were 2 and 0 instead of 0 and 2. The thing that we've got to do is, uh, you know, this is this tough business, and uh, and the comfort zone is not always there. I mean, you, we've got our back to the wall. We've lost two games, uh, two games that uh, that hurt to lose because we put a lot of time and a lot of preparation into them. Our guys played hard. Uh, the night we uh, everything wasn't always real pretty but we didn't quit we hung in there and uh, and I was uh, I was impressed with the with the fight that we had uh, against a good team the thing that we did we're too generous we gave up too many big things we uh, we shot ourselves in the foot and you can't win football games against good football teams when you do that 
you've got to uh, you really have to go out and you've got to learn to uh, to make people beat you and and I guess that's discipline and you know we like some discipline and, and we'll get it we, uh, I think that there's nothing wrong with our team that we can't get corrected I think it sort of renews your commitment every time that you lose a game and because it hurts to lose it, it, it really it hurts these kids to lose it hurts us coaches to lose and uh, so consequently the last thing you want to do is have any panic and uh, I think you need to be realistic on who you're playing and uh, and why you've lost and, and try to correct the reasons that you have and uh, I think we can still have a good football team. It is hard, uh, you know, our backs are against the wall right now, but you know, this team's got enough character that we'll bounce back and we'll work hard next week for our next game and uh, you know, you haven't heard the last of this team. We'll be at the top of the standings before the season's over. When you were within three points, did you did you feel like you had the momentum? It certainly looked like you did. Well. Yeah, I thought so. You know, there uh, we did a lot of good things in offense today that we didn't do last week, and you know we missed a big play every once in a while. Um, you know, like getting the ball in the end zone at certain times, but we did a lot of good things, and uh, you know we just need to iron out the creases. And I think as offensive ball club, we're going to be good. I knew when it really was not your night, when you're locked up at halftime talking to your team and the Gatlin brothers are performing at halftime, I said, this is not Spike's night. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough if you miss a day like that. But, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you, the, uh, the the setting was off stage. You know, we had a great crowd and we're playing a, a great team on national television. And I'm just pulling we didn't play better. I really am. But we'll have another day. And, uh, you know, what we got to do is get get our family to work, get back to the drawing board. And we've got to work hard this week and try to get ready to play a good New Mexico team next week. And we will see you next week. Great. See you in Albuquerque. And you know the thing about it, uh, these kids feel the same way I feel. They're, uh, you know, they're devastated because they want to win. And uh, and they're good kids. And they're, they're guys that, uh, that, that really are neat. And uh, we'll be all right. I guarantee you we'll be all right. You've you not heard the last of Texas Tech in 1990. You don't come away with any...